Hey, good afternoon, folks. I want to thank you for joining me today. Um, I want to say something before I share the dream. Uh, This dream lasted from April 17th to May 16th, almost a month, almost 30 days. It's been one of the longest dreams that I've had. And most of you know, if you follow me in the mornings, you know that I listen to a lot of news. I I don't listen to news every day, every, every, all day long. But uh, a lot of what's in this dream could very much come out of, uh, out of what I watch and what I see. But I also know that as I prayed about these dreams, um, and I, I have spent probably 30 hours praying through this dream uh, throughout this week uh, and last week. Once I start having them, I start praying. I have sent it to Cherie, and her ideas kind of resonate resonate with me as well. Um, so I just want to, I'm calling it the let me show you something dream. Uh, it's very, very much real to life as, we're, as the things we're seeing that are going on. And also, as I said, uh, it, it, it mentions some things that I have been I've been concerned about uh, as both as a pastor, as a Christian and as an American citizen. And I think you'll see that come out. But I also believe that the overall the overall the overall commission of this dream. I believe that God is, is giving a lot more people dreams and visions and because it's the last days. But I do believe that God is speaking. Uh, I really do believe that God is hoping um, is wanting us to pray. So. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to read a paragraph and just kind of say, I'll, I'll read through the dream. I, I've debated how to do this. Um, I'm very, very, I'm very, very distressed by what I see in culture, but I'm also very, very, um, very, very encouraged by what I see both in the dream and in the things that God has shown me before. Um, so here we go. The dream began with me sitting on the top of a very tall tree looking down on fog and mist that hung over the entire nation. It was covering Canada and Mexico as well. It did not cover the water, just the, just the, na- just the nations. I could see the physical land cover covered in fog. It covered Canada and Mexico as well. But it looked like the fog was churning. It was moving. It was staying in place over the United States of America, not over Mexico or Canada. It reminded me of a locust swarm that you could see like in a National Geographic photo. It was just moving effortlessly, but it was also frothing. It was like, uh, it was like steam coming off of hot coffee or hot cocoa or hot tea or something, but it covered, it was thick and you could not see anything below what you were seeing from the top of the fog. And I was pondering the moving of the fog when the man appeared to me. And I believe the man is Jesus or represents the Holy Spirit at times, but he, he came out and he simply said, let me show you something. And he grabbed my hand and we stepped out in the air. Because I was in a tall tree looking down, I was kind of hanging, you know, like holding on to a limb and with my feet on the the limb looking at it watching. I'm thankful that God sees all the things that are going on. He knows what's coming. He knows what's happening. And I just had that, that sense. I was watching what was going on. I was about to be instructed or told some things. We descended down through the fog, the fog. And once we were not flying, it was like we were walking. Okay. Um, but the fog seemed to be very evil and very intentional. It was appearing to try to reach out and grab me with his, with his eerie ethereal arms. It was almost like the fog was alive. Uh, it was dark. It was evil. But it was trying to grab hold. Uh, it kind of reminds me of just the cultural blanket that's been put over our country with some of the craziness that's out there. Uh, the man led me on until we reached the ground. And then he said, look up. And when he said that, I realized that the fog was gone. But I could see jets that were flying in all directions. And it, it appeared to be almost like 7, 7.30 at night. Uh, it was dusk. Things were starting to come. The, 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 the lights were going off. People were getting ready for bed. Darkness was hitting. It was almost like I could see traffic had stopped and people were home going to bed and getting ready for work the next day. So in other words, I'm watching all these, these jets going back and forth, north, south, east, west, flying in all directions. It was obviously dusk. The lights were going out. And that's when I realized that I heard this loud hissing. And every single jet was spraying something out with the exhaust. Now, we would call these things chemtrails. And I've I've discussed some of that. 
And the jets flying north would be going north for a while, and they suddenly turn around and come back and spray the same way. The ones going east would go east a couple of miles and then come back. And it was like regional. It wasn't one jet going all the way north and south. Uh, it was it, it was it was not just east and west. There was like it was like every state had jets over it, over every state, every region, every area in that sense. And the jets flying east and west, doing what the northern ones doing, they had blanket in the country and whatever it was spraying. And time passed and the jets disappeared. And then I saw people getting up, leaving their houses, going to work. So all this stuff was being done at night. And the sense that I have about it was that there's a whole lot of evil that's going on right here, right now, in our world. Uh, and they were, and, the, and the, the spraying was, was going on at night. It was happening when no one was aware, no one was watching, no one was awake. Almost it was, it was some elite and corporate plan to poison, poison the nation. And once again, the fog was over Mexico and Canada, but... It was not moving anywhere except the United States of America. Also, I realized that this probably is a real conspiracy. Things that were going on, things that we're seeing, and all that's happening in that regards. Um, it was happening at night, so nobody sees, nobody knew, nobody knows what's going on. People are getting up for school, getting on the buses, they're going to school, and then the next thing that happens is I see this. I was standing in Times Square watching those Jumbotron television screens, and a breaking news item was a major outbreak of a new virus. Now, the timeline that I could tell in the dream, late summer, early fall, as the, as the news broadcasters were talking about this, the World Health Organization was laying out guidelines that must be followed regardless of constitutions or national law. Those are the two words they use, regardless of constitutions or national law. There were military tanks and Hummers. They started patrolling uh, as the announcements were being made. And I said to him, the man, that the jets appeared to be the source of the medical issue. And the man nodded and said, there's more to see. And we suddenly appear on the southern border. So here I saw that the news, uh, the news was complicit and almost an accomplice with what was happening, what was going on, what was being said, what was being done. Um, obviously, somebody was behind it. It was happening at night. And so uh, who knows if that's the cause or who knows whatever. All, all we realize is that there is something sinister happening, something sinister happening in our world. Uh, there's something sinister happening and going on. And, uh, and it's, it's being allowed, it's being pushed, probably by those in power, but nonetheless. Then I saw an enormous line. As he said, there's more to see. Suddenly I'm on the, on the southern border. I saw an enormous line of volcanoes that seemed to have sprung up overnight, and they were just on the border. They covered from the western point of California all the way to Texas, just on the border. Literally, these were volcanoes on the border. They were very tall. They shadowed the ground, and the border... And they shadowed the ground, the border, and they were directly on the border itself. And I cannot emphasize this enough. It was volcan volcanoes on the border. And they were hundreds of miles in the air. The ground was shaking, seemingly creaking, and the volcanoes trembled. And they started erupting magma and lava. And then, suddenly, the entire border shook. And I saw the volcanoes appear to grow. And the ground below them looked like it was torn. Now, if you've ever seen a tree that gets knocked over in the wind or, or damage or tornado. And there was just a look like, like a little spot of, of a little spot of the of earth that was open there. OK, so the volcanoes tip backwards. They're still spewing lava and all these other things. But there was a hole where the volcanoes came up along the entire southern border. And at that moment, all sorts of people dressed like normal migrants came running out and they were sprinting. They were running as hard and as fast as they possibly could to get into the country. And as they ran, they were taking off backpacks. They were taking off backpacks, and they were pulling out weapons, and they were putting together weapons. There are some, uh, some weapons that can be folded down. They were unfolding them. They were pulling them out. They were, they were putting clips in, but they're doing it as they were running. They were running as hard as they could. The people on the American side were watching the eruptions. They were watching the, the, the magma and the lava and the smoke and the ash cloud, and they didn't even notice the people that were running towards them. 
They pointed to the sky. They were making all sorts of faces, the noise, almost like they were watching fireworks. They were just like, oh, wow, look at that. And, and pointing over here, pointing there. They were looking up and they did not see. They did not see any of the people that were rushing towards them. And now the runners were running up and they were shooting. They were teaming up on people. They were storming properties. But they took nothing. When they went into the homes and the houses, they took nothing. They just shot people. They killed people. They spin it on and they were moving with skilled intent and military precision. They, they would come together to a house. They would go in. They would, you, you'd see gunfire. They would run out, not taking a thing, not at all. They were brutal. They showed no mercy. And there were some that carried samurai swords. And they were beheading many people along the way. So what I saw this is that, that we don't have a, a, an, an immigration issue. We have an invasion going on. And what you don't know will kill you. People are looking at the wrong things. People are seeing the, the whole wrong issue of, of what's going on out there. Instead of looking at what's really happening and seeing what's really happening for the danger that it is, we just kind of push it off and, oh, Washington will fix that or whatever. I saw death and destruction. I saw danger. I saw chaos on the border, and it was rushing towards us. It was rushing north. This was on purpose dismantling. This was also on purpose distraction. Back at Times Square, the broadcaster was informing citizens that spectacular eruptions on the southern border were getting people out of their homes to watch. So now they're saying, hey, 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 folks, you need to go out of your homes and watch these, watch these incredible uh, magma fields. Watch these incredible volcanic eruptions that are going on. <clears throat> go outside and watch. He also encouraged anyone within 100 miles of the border. And that's exactly what he said. If you live within 100 miles of the border, you need to go outside immediately and see if you can see them from where you are. And I said to the man, that newsman is trying to get people outside so they'll be killed. And the man nodded. And then he said, there's more. And suddenly we're standing outside the Capitol in Washington, D.C., I think all of us know that the news media is complicit with the lies that are coming out of our leadership. Things are happening. And then I could hear all kinds of noise going on inside the Capitol building and someone yelling into a bullhorn. Now, look, a bullhorn is just a cheap way to get attention. When you don't have a sound system or good balance of stereo or speakers, you use a bullhorn. It's cheap communication. But these people were talking about taking the country back and making people listen. And there were screams that seemed very demonic and just wild to be coming out of humans. It was like growls and screams and cries, demonic, almost like banshees. And there was a fence outside the Capitol building that surrounded it. But suddenly police and military came and they tied ropes they kind of like threw ropes up with, with, with uh, like uh, with nooses on them, and they grabbed the top parts of the, of the fence, and they began to pull them down. They were pulling with all their might, pulling the fences down. They bent the fences over. They didn't push them out of the way. They didn't knock them down. They pulled them down. And then just as suddenly, the doors of the Capitol pushed open, and the congressmen, congresswomen, senators, Faces and people I recognize, people who are in power and leadership, elected officials at the federal level, they came rushing out into the streets and they were jumping and leaping and stepping over those fences. And they were armed. They were armed with guns and clubs. And they began attacking and beating any, any citizen that was close. And they left this extremely bloody trail and they pursued people until the people became so exhausted they dropped from exhaustion, and then they beat them to death. I watched elected officials beat these people to death. Now, I do not think this is what's going to happen. I think the whole point of it is the people who were there were the ones that make the laws, the ones who, who pr provide for those things out there. But it was horrific because they, they were beating people to death in the streets, and it was getting darker. It was horrific to the point I said to the man, why are our elected officials doing this to the people? Well, this time he didn't move his head. He didn't nod. He didn't move his head at all, but he said, there's more to see. And it suddenly became very, very quiet. 
folks, we have laws that are changing and shifting. We have people that believe that men can be pregnant, that men can be women, women can be men, and everything else. And we know better. We absolutely know better. We're starting to see culture believe every single lie that's pushed out there. And then we have new laws that are being passed that protect those lies. Think about that. But Congress began to beat these people to death. They were, they were, they were attacking ordinary citizens. I saw families taking pictures outside the Capitol who were just pummeled and beaten down by people. And the elected officials who were running were covered in blood from the people who they'd beaten to death. And they just, just kept on going. They were looking for somebody else to attack and beat on. And he didn't move his head. When I said, why are our elected officials doing this to the people? He didn't move his head at all. He just simply said, there's more to see. Well, I, I, obviously, 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 we know what this is. We know that government's corrupt. We know that government has compromi compromised everything it is and was and is going to be not to be trusted. We're not going to be a help to us at all. I'll continue. The difference in what I just had heard with the screams for help and the people running was significant because now everything is quiet. So I've seen the jets spraying. I've seen the volcanoes erupting. And then when they when, when the distraction of the volcanoes was going on, people were watching. People were running out from the, from underneath the and, and headed towards anyone they could get to, getting to America. And they were headed north, folks. No one was headed south. I was standing on the banks of a river early in the morning. Now, I drive across the Cumberland River every, every, most every day here in Cumberland County. From time to time, I'll say it's the Amazon and the Cumberlands, and the, uh, the Amazon and the Cumberland, because when you drive across at the right time, all the fogs down there, and you can see the tree banks on both sides. It looks like something from the Amazon River, but I know it's not. So I'm standing on the banks of the river early in the morning. It was morning quiet, and, and, and if you're a morning person, you understand there's just a morning feel. There was a small amount of fog that began to dissipate, and there were frogs croaking in the background. You hear fish jumping in the water. Suddenly, there was no noise at all. It became deathly quiet. It was almost surreal. I remember being almost uneasy because it was so, so quiet. And then the man stood beside me quietly, and he pointed to his ear. He did this twice. He went, he pointed across the river. So he taps on his head, taps near his ear twice, and points across the river. So I walked to the edge of the river, and I listened to, as, as intently as I possibly could, but I could hear nothing. So I began to strain because I knew that the man had pointed twice and po uh, tapped his ear twice and pointed, but he was telling me to listen. And finally, I began to hear what sounded like muffled little cries. The fog continued to lift. I could see the sun shining. And now I'm looking at a little country church. And at the end, it was at the end of this long gravel road, but there were no cars. There were no cars parked near this church. And I could hear people inside that little church. The windows were open. I could hear them crying out. And there was a wisp of fire, just a little wisp of fire. Like if you got a fire that's almost dying. There's a little wisp of fire that was on the, on the roof of that church just burning. I could see it in the sun. It's a little church, little country church, windows open, and this long gravel road, but there were no cars. So I immediately got the idea that nobody drove here. Everybody walked down this long gravel road, that uneasy gravel road, and they came down there with one reason. That reason was to pray. They were crying out. They were repenting. They were calling out names of elected officials. I heard governors' names. I heard senators' names. I heard congressmen's names. I heard, I heard leaders in this country. I heard those people calling out their name and asking God to expose the corruption in them, asking God that they would repent. I'm asking God for conviction to come to their hearts and their lives and their mind. They were praying that corruption would be exposed. That was the high, highlight of it. And they were praying in tongues. I'm Pentecostal, unashamedly going to say that. I pray in tongues on a daily basis. I spent about the last half hour before I shared this dream, praying in tongues in our foyer in the, in the, in the sanctuary. They were praying in tongues, but something else that caught my attention, I heard specifically English and in Spanish. 
Now, I don't speak Spanish. I have a Hispanic daughter-in-law. My son married a Hispanic girl who's a wonderful addition to our family, and she's very fluent in Spanish. My son needs to do a whole lot better with Spanish, but nonetheless. I heard them speaking in English and in Spanish. I kept hearing certain Spanish words. I knew they were praying in English and in Spanish. And they were praying with a passion. It was refreshing. And when it, 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 I, 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 I'm going to walk closer to the building in this dream, but I began to see the people inside. They were packed. In. There was no walking room. I would have loved to have been a part of that, but I'm a walker, so I'm probably going to stay outside. But nonetheless, these people were packed together, and they were praying. And they were praying with passion. And there was fire in their prayers. And they were going, I mean, they were going at it. Have you ever been in a, just in a Pentecostal prayer time where, where the focus is on and God's presence is there and the fire is hot? You know what I'm talking about. It was that type of an atmosphere. There was a standing table. It was a standing globe, like a little, little pillow. There was a globe, like one of the things you see in the school and you could spin. It was standing on a pillar near the pulpit, and there were people who had laid their hands on that globe. They laid their hands on that globe and they began, they were praying for the nations. They were calling out for kings and queens and prime ministers and leaders and officials and presidents. They were calling out the leaders of nations. I heard Zelensky's name. I heard Putin's name. I heard King Charles' name. I heard Trudeau's name. I heard the Mexican president's name. I heard different places from all. People were just praying. And this whole room was full of, nobody was talking or looking around. They were engaged in prayer the whole time they were there. And they were praying. They were praying intently. They were focused. There was passion. There was fire. They laid their hands on that globe and they were praying for the nations. And they were praying for those nations by name. I began to pray on the outside of the window. And the man said to go tell them he was pleased with their passion. But they must not stop. This was an absolute determined cry on God's behalf to tell the church, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't think it's too bad. Don't think it's too ugly. Don't think it's too shallow. We've got to keep praying, folks. And I believe, once again, this dream was a call to prayer because things are happening and going on right now that we know are awful, terrible, tragic, un-American, ungodly, unbiblical. But you know what? There's a church that needs to be praying and focused. Don't worry about who's not praying. You be praying and encouraging those that aren't praying to pray. Warn your neighbors. Warn your friends. Warn your family. Tell somebody what's going on. Our nation is in trouble. We know the Antichrist is probably out there ready to make his, make his appearance. I believe that. I really do. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But we see the asphalt being laid for the Antichrist to walk in on. We see the digital currency concept. We see the global elites calling for the great reason and all these other things. These people were praying. And of all the things I saw in the dream that stood out, this is the one that I had for the most. I, 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 all those other three scenes played out over about three weeks, okay? But then I saw this part to the last the last chapter, uh, paragraph I'm going to tell you about. I, ha I saw this over the last week and a half. Over and over and over, all I heard was prayer, 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 prayer. He says, Go to them and tell them he was pleased with their passion, but they must not stop. So I'm going to take that personally. If you're a praying person, if your church is praying, keep praying. I don't care if they won't listen. I don't care what's going on and what's not happening. You keep praying. You keep trusting God. You keep believing. You keep the fire. Or you keep stoking the fire that's in you and around you. Keep stoking it out. Keep stoking it. Keep stoking it. Keep stoking it. Keep praying. Keep trusting God to use you. Keep sharing with, with your friends and family. Jesus Christ is coming back. And if you're not ready, you're going to repent. And then he said to me this. Prayer is the most effective way to push back the darkness that is both here and coming. Nobody has to tell us it's going to get worse. We know that it is. Period. We know that it is. Prayer is the most effective way to push back the darkness that is both here and coming. Folks, don't stop praying. Don't stop holding on. Don't stop. Don't stop praying. Paul said pray without ceasing. Now's the time to do that. Now's the time to get that going. Now's the time to pray like we've never prayed before. Now's the time to pray our families and our friends in. Now's the time to pray the people we work with in. Why? 
because our leaders, our borders, our people in the medical world, they need our prayers. Because the compromise that is coming and will continue to come is going to water everything down in ways that we've never seen before. After he said, you know, prayer is the most effective way to push back the, the, the darkness is both here and coming. He said, he then breathed towards me. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm next to the building looking at him. Building's behind me, the church's behind me with a little, little fire on the top, okay? He breathed towards me and it went past me. And it felt like a hot breeze on an August summer day. It was hot. I mean, it was hot to the touch. We moved my daughter to Phoenix, Arizona several years ago. We did it in August because she worked at a school. And I remember stepping out of the car thinking, oh, man. You just immediately start breaking out in, in sweat because it's so, it's so humid. Or not humid, just so hot. That was what it felt like. This, this hot breath goes by me. It went through me. And it made the, the even in the, in the dream and even at night, it felt like the, the hair on my arms was standing up because of what had just gone past me, the breath of God. And when it got to the building, it set the entire church on fire. Now, there was fire there before, but when he breathed on it, that's when the fire erupted. And it was like a burning bush that was not consumed. And even looking in the windows, you could see the fire was inside the building. So they'd been praying with passion, 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 a little bit of fire on top. But when Jesus breathed towards us, toward that church of people praying, it erupted. I mean, it was like, whoosh. That you hear that whoosh sound. That was what it was like. And people were praying. There was fire on all of them. They were praying and loud, and they got louder and louder and louder and louder and louder. It was exciting. I have a lot of different emotions when I'm having the dreams, but in the dream, it was like, this is good. This is powerful. Lord, I need it. I want this more in my life. I turned to look at the man because I've been looking at the building. It was just erupted in flame and burning. I turned to look at the man, but he was gone. But I heard his words, and it said, I am with you, church. I am with you. And there is more to do. <laughs> verily, verily, I say unto you. When he tapped his ear twice and pointed, he was saying, church, listen, you need to pray. Our communities need to have the, our communities need to hear people praying on their behalf. Our communities need to hear us praying on behalf of our communities. Our, commu our, our family and friends need to hear us praying. They need to hear us praying and asking God to bless and move and help them. In other words, God said, I'm with you, church. Now, why would he say this twice? I'll tell you why. I think persecution, prosecution, incredible things are coming to church. And we just need to stand strong in spite of what we hit, get hit with. You know, the first thing that God really spoke to me through the dreams was brace yourself. I hope you're still braced because we're not out of the brace yourself stage, not just the dream, but of where we are in life. Of where we are in life. Where we are in life. Church, he's calling us to pray. He's telling us that things are going to start happening within the atmosphere on the border and from Washington, D.C., that we're not going to be able to push back against unless we pray. Unless we pray. The Bible tells me that Jesus Christ is the mediator between man and God. And you can pray to Jesus. You can talk to him. Holy Spirit will, will, will work through your heart and your life and bring you to that saving knowledge of who he is. We don't need a priest, so to speak, because he's our high priest. And that's who we go to. So stand strong knowing who he is. Get into the word. Get into the book. Get into your prayer life. Stand strong. Repent and, and let the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit to examine your heart and your life and your mind. Why? Because we're human, folks, and we mess up. He said, I am with you, church. I am with you. Now, why would he say that? Because challenges are coming. Difficulties coming. And it's going to be real easy to say, I'm out of here. Don't do that. Don't compromise. Don't go soft on us now, church. Speak the truth in love. Stand up for what is right. And when there's talk about different things around the water cooler at work, hey, you let them know what the Word of God says. Let them know what the Word of God says and stand on it. Don't be afraid to, don't compromise it. 
Don't compromise what you believe. Don't compromise what you know. I don't care what the science says today. The science is wrong. God's word is true, period. Men can't be women and women can't be men. And men don't give birth to babies. That's the world in which we live. I am sick and tired of culture. I'm sick of what it's become. But I have to live in this world and continue to speak the truth of who God is and what his word is and what his word declares and what his word demands. Folks, that's all of us. That's all of us. Well, I'm a thankful Protestant and I'm a thankful Pentecostal and not apologizing for that. I'm thankful that the apostles knew what was coming and warned us. And folks, we got to get strong. Be connected to a body of Christ. We need each other now more than ever. And I believe things are coming, difficult things. And I've seen these things for, for years. And, and yes, yeah, some have come true and some haven't. And that's fine. I'm simply sharing dreams because God puts it on my heart. And I do. I'm thankful for others that are dreaming. I'm thankful for people out there that are recognizing that he's coming back. We got to get ready. We got to be ready. We got to be ready. We got, we got to be ready. So, folks, let's keep going strong. Stay in the word. Stay rooted and grounded in the word. Connect yourself with a body of believers. If you're not baptized in the spirit, I, I really, I really encourage you to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe that tongues is for today. I'm unashamedly going to say that. When I see, when I have dreams like this, I find myself praying more in tongues than I ever had before. Matter of fact, in the last three years, I have prayed more in tongues on a daily basis than I ever did before. I feel that 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 unction, that 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 encourage that I've got to do it. So, folks, I'll tell you why. My hope's in Jesus. No matter what comes, my, my hope is in Jesus, no matter what comes against me. My hope is in Jesus, no matter what I face. So we're going to see compromise in government. We're going to see compromise on the border. We're going to see compromise in the medical field. We're going to see compromise with, with the environment, everything else. But I'll tell you what. God gives us the strength, the power, the fire, and the encouragement that we need. And that baptism in the Holy Spirit is one of the most important things that you can have. For those that don't watch me regularly, I do a podcast called Practical Prayer in the Spirit on Tuesday. It's always about tongues. It's always about gifts. It's always about something along that lines. And I just want to encourage you to seek it. Encourage you to seek it. Why? Because there are things about to happen and change and shift in our world. It's going to keep getting worse. Okay? I know there's problems. That, oh, it's going to be good. and going to be this. and going to be that. You know, look, I know what the Lord, I know what the Lord is, is sharing with me. And you, you can pray about it, make sure it lines up with the word. What I'm telling you, I believe it does. I believe it is. I'm going to be determined. And I want the church out there that's listening to me, be determined to not stop praying. Do not stop praying. Do not stop seeking his face. Keep going. Keep going. All right. So I encourage you to pray about this. I encourage you to stay braced. You just saw wondering said that. I encourage you to stand strong. I encourage you to stand strong in your faith. Don't back down. Don't back down. Folks, here's the thing. There's always going to be somebody getting ready for Bible college. Always going to be somebody who hasn't had a baby yet. Always going to be somebody who hasn't gotten married yet when Jesus comes. I believe that. Nonetheless, I know a lot of folks, I believe in a rapture and unapologetically say that. I'm going to be doing a series starting in June on, on the rapture, second coming, all those, all those things about that. We're going to look at every passage that involves it, both Old and New Testament. We're going to talk about, I believe Jesus is coming. And that's why he always said, you know, look up, your redemption draws nigh. So, folks, this is the world in which we live. Stand strong, stay faithful. Stay strong, stay faithful, all right? Appreciate you listening. Appreciate you praying. Appreciate you getting involved. So, God bless.